All right, we are back with another deep dive feature inside of the Hazura console. Today we are looking at Git deploys. Yes, CICD inside of the Hazura console. This is an amazing new feature that we think you're gonna love. To start off this uh, feature look, we're going to go ahead and make a new project, which we'll do right now. All right, our project is initializing. Let's go ahead and look at where we would integrate with Git, and that is from here on the project dashboard. We're gonna head down to the Git deploy uh, tab here, and what we need to do initially is authenticate with GitHub, which I'm gonna go ahead and do right now. All right, I'm authenticated. I'm gonna go ahead and choose the repository where I have an example project that I wanna work with. This project could be one that you have created from a local example of the Hazura console where you have gone ahead and done migrations or made changes using the offline flow, or this could be from a project that you use to scaffold a lot of common examples where you just have a repository that you maintain following a configuration as code sort of paradigm. In my case, I do have a repository uh, previously identified. You can find that here inside of GitHub. I have cloned ours, uh, cloned this one from the Hazura starter itself. Inside we have a config file that identifies the version and it identifies where the metadata should actually live. And, in, and that's saying inside of the metadata folder, Instead of the metadata folder, we have YAML files to identify things like actions, remote schemas, permissions, uh, databases, and things of that nature. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and identify this repo. The initial connection, when I try to initialize the first deploy, will fail, and that's because I want to then demonstrate how, when I update this repo uh, with a fix, it will go ahead and actually deploy that content for me. So what we need to do is head back over to the project. The very first step that I need to do is uh, I'll go ahead and make the connection now and then I need to connect a database to my project. So I will come inside here to the repo and I'm gonna choose the GitHub starter and I will choose the master branch to track and I'm not gonna worry about directory for now and I'm gonna go ahead and say that the deploy mode is automatic. When I set that up, it's not gonna kick off a deploy from the very first step. I would have to do that manually. Before I do that, I do need to launch the console here and, to, and I need to add a database that will be accepting all of these uh, up statements. So coming inside of the data tab here, I will go ahead and simply provision a quick one with Heroku. And that's just giving me a quick database, quick Postgres database to work with. And heading back over now, once I've confirmed that the database is in place, there we are. I will go back now and trigger off this deploy. Now, like I said, this will fail and we're gonna see why it fails in just one moment. Okay, jokes on me because I failed to push my breaking code to the repository. But what you'll see what has occurred here is that the first deploy actually did go through correctly. And I went ahead and pushed breaking code uh, right after that to simulate then the behavior that I was expecting. And you'll see that it did fail. And that's actually a good uh, thing to show off here as well because this will not go ahead and deploy then, right? So the successful deploy, everything that worked out correctly and we can view this deploy, we go inside here and we can view all of the settings here of what got applied and how it, how it actually worked. Uh, went through just fine and it actually made the deploy. But the uh, breaking deploy, if we view that, we'll see that when it got to the actual product health check, it would not deploy that and it will not break our project. Now, when I come back to actually show what was the issue, the break that I actually checked into the repository, I have a code space running here. Uh, and in that code space, the part that's it's important to note is where you are identifying the database. So we'll go to the code here and inside of the metadata up to databases and the databases.yaml file, we have the from uh, environment variable here uh, is where the database URL is identified. And I have given this a, a bad name. Uh, you can see I've checked it in called break. So we're gonna fix that and put that back to what it should be, which is PG database URL.
And if we want to confirm what that is for our project, we can come back here to the environment variables. We can see that it is PG database URL. That is the correct URL we want to use to identify which from env we would uh, grab here. So this is correct. I'm going to go ahead and make this save. I'm going to head back over to the uh, get check-in now. I'm going to call this uh, fix and I will check that into a repository. And then we need to go ahead and push that up. Once we push that, if we come back over to our git deploy tab here, we'll see that we've now pushed fix into the system and it's now scheduled and is deploying a, the fix. So we'll give that a few moments to go ahead and, uh, and click through as well. All right, and there we have it, fix is gone through. And if we actually open up the console, we'll be able to see the current status of our project. Let's go ahead and refresh this view here. And what we'll see that it's done is underneath the public uh, folder here, the public database, public schema, we have the orders, products, and users, the way that we defined them inside of our system, along with the relationships that were identified as well. That's basically the Git deploy in a nutshell. It is a fantastic new feature. CICD is the way to go with modern web development. And we think that you are going to enjoy working with this a lot. Let us know what your thoughts are on this. Find us on our community chat platforms and we will see you in the next deep dive. Thanks for watching, bye.